raindrops are falling on my head And just like the guy's feet are too big for his bed Nothing seems to fit Those raindrops are falling on my head And they keep falling So I just dig me some talk into the sun And I said I didn't like the way he got things done He's sleeping on the job Those raindrops are falling on my head And they keep falling But there's one thing I know The blues they send to greet me Won't defeat me I to me he was my best friend as a child uh, going back to kindergarten all the way to now, of course, I always considered him a friend. And uh, he was just a good friend. His you mom knows she was my second mom. The family was. The family's great. Uh, gee, we, we did everything. We played Army. We played Dungeons and Dragons. We played Cowboys and Indians. We had carnival. talking to his mom Susie a, a, a lot when he was a kid saying this land is your, your land yeah this love that song you love that Woody Guthrie and Arlo Guthrie I like that that's it we had this huge green tank and it had like a turret and it was really big and like Two or three kids could fit inside of it. And of course, John always had to be the guy on the turret, and he would shoot bottle rockets out of it. And I was the little kid down in the bottom going, Get me out of here, get me out of here. It was so hot. <laughs> Dude, it was just, his house was so cool and so fun. He, he had the tank, he had a clubhouse up in the tree with, um, his dad just, just built all kinds of cool things. And We had our own parachute, and big giant tree, uh, pine tree in the front of his house, and he climbed up probably, I don't know, pretty high, <laughs> and I remember, I don't know, doing a countdown or something, and then he jumped out and thud landed on the <laughs> ground, <laughs> sprawled out. where we uh, started going to shows and hanging out together and uh, there was a place available where I used to work washing trucks where we could actually jam together a place we could rent we called it the box when I first met John uh, I was at the box and uh, I was with some other friends that were right around the corner from the box and had a shop back there behind the, the grog shop liquor store and uh, we were back there drinking beer, which is, these guys did, and I hear music, and I said, that's live music. He said, yeah, it's a band over there. I said, what? So we go over there, and sure enough, there's this group of guys playing there. This was 1988, 
and I just moved a block away, bought a house right around the corner. And I said, wow, this is fantastic, and they invited me in. And I think it was John that invited me in, at least that's my memory of it. And I uh, played uh, John was that I was his girlfriend for the last 20 years. We were together at the hospital at Friendly Hills, and we had a common friends that he knew and that I knew, but we didn't know each other. And you being so excited about that, who this new guy, this guy John at your work, oh, silly, had snuck up behind you and whispered in your ear <laughs> something <laughs> suggestive. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> one of my best friends, absolutely one of my best friends. It was I would say it was probably 100% music. You know, we'd go over to, I'd go over to his house and he lived uptown Whittier, uh, and we'd sit down and do the guitar thing and, you know, sing George Harrison songs and John Lennon songs and stuff. And Definitely the Grateful Dead. Um, he loved Clapton, he loved the Beatles. He opened up a couple things to me, Eric Clapton, the Grateful Dead, um, the Beatles, I was, you know. As a teenager, was Bob Dylan. That was something definitely, Peter, Paul, and Mary. That was, and that all came originally from the influence that he got from his parents. Scrooge was still Nash and Young, you know, there's, there's, he had a lot of people that he really liked, but I would say the biggest one would be the Grateful Dead. That would definitely be it. To me, when you were looking through all his ticket stubs, he saved his ticket stubs. Every from ticket stub. It looks like every concert he ever went to his whole life. Yeah. And, one, it was a little envelope and written on it was God. Yeah. We looked inside, it was Eric Air Clapton. Clapton. <laughs> <laughs> Clapton <tickets. laughs> Yes concert out in Glen Helen Regional or whatever it's called now mm -hmm. and I was able to get backstage passes for that so we're gonna go back and meet you know Steve Howe and Rick Wakeman all these guys and Alan White and so we went to the Renaissance Fair that was right there that day so we're dressed in our Ren Fair outfits which are you know big pirate shirts and just you know kind of re if you're at the Ren Fair it fits but if you're not at the Ren Fair it looks pretty ridiculous but we're thinking that, oh, it's, yes, they're English, these guys, they'll probably even be there earlier. Well, we're backstage, and we're in the, the little lunchroom with the bright fluorescent lights. We're, we're saying, there's media people and John and I. And we're sitting at this table, and John's got that green beret, the big one, not the little one, the big one. 
you know, where he's got it kind of on the, the angle to the back there. <laughs> and Steve Howe comes walking in, he's the guitar player, he's walking in, he's, he's looking at the media people, he doesn't want to talk to them, he's seeing us, he wants to sit with us, but he sees what, how we're dressed, and I'll never forget, he's just staring at John's hat. Oh, yeah, he's got some hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the people often identify John with his hats. I, I, As you look through the photographs, almost everything. It's hard mm. to find them where he's not wearing hats. Or it's more uh, literally, often, you know, maybe the older, older, older. Ones. Right. Literally, to walk out that front door and go out to the garage, he'd put a hat on. Because you know, he put a hat on. Everywhere he went, he had a hat on. He took it off. He's like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> If my words did glow With the gold of sunshine And my tunes were played On the hall of the strung Would you hear my voice Come through the music Would you hold it near As it were your own It's a hand-me-down The thoughts are broken Perhaps they're better Left unsung I don't know Don't really care Let there be song to fill the air. Something would get him, and you could see him laugh. It always just struck my heart as, oh my God, I love this, because he just would make me laugh, because you didn't see him do it very often. When he would laugh to the point where he'd go, <laughs> you know, like had to put his head in his hands kind of thing. It's like, that really got him. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> it always made me feel really good to hear him laugh. That, that was something. That I, you know, you wouldn't get a lot of, but when you did, oh, it was great. Great. When he would crack up, it's just the sound. I'll, I'll never forget the sound. And uh, <laughs> to this day, whenever I hear, hear that Pillsbury Doughboy commercial, when it's on TV and you hear that, oh, whatever that thing, John did a perfect imitation of that. And to this day, I could be in the other room and hear it on TV, and it's like, that's John. And I know that there's nothing to do with character or anything, but I know, and if he, anyone else ever heard that, now, unfortunately, they're going to hear John every time they hear that commercial. Was <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> in another lifetime, one of toil and blood. When blackness was a virtue, the road was full of mud. I came in from the wilderness, a creature void of form. Come in, she said, I'll give you shelter from the storm. And if I pass this way again, you can rest assured. I'll always do my best for her, on that I give my word. In a world of steel at death and men who are fighting to be warm Come in, she said, I'll give ya shelter from the storm Not a word was spoke between us, there was little risk involved Everything up to that point had been left unresolved Try imagining a place where it's always safe and warm Come in, she said, I'll give ya shelter from the storm I was burned out from exhaustion buried in the hail poisoned in the bushes and blown out on the trail hunted like a crocodile ravaged in the corn come in she said I'll give ya shelter from the storm
Suddenly I turned around. He's a very cool guy. He was very caring, very giving. He was a great person. Any animal that came around, they all loved him, didn't mm -hmm. they? And he would, they would be drawn towards him. And he, it should have been his field, something to do with animals. But that was very typical of John because he really loved animals a lot and they seemed to respond to him <laughs> yeah, very He would never kill a spider. He'd always put it on a paper and take it outside. Never. Never kill a spider. And whereas me, I as he went, kill it. <laughs> he'd, he'd always he'd always save it, take it outside, put it where it you know, somewhere where it could live and so yeah. that's one thing I'd remember to find. He never he couldn't hurt a fly. Well, the deputy walks on hard nails and the preacher rides a mount. But nothing really matters much, it's doom alone that counts. And the one-eyed undertaker, he blows a feudal horn. Come in, she said, I'll give ya shelter from the storm. person he, he cared about you and one of the things uh, to me he was intelligent so he's peaceful nonviolent I always thought that I was quick to you know argue about something or uh, get mad at somebody and uh, he wasn't that way being a good friend um, loving the music and being a peaceful person I used the word intensity, I think the word I left out was passion, you know, um, and, and like I say, our, our relationship, it was, it was based around music, but we, we were really good friends, I mean, we were best friends, for sure. That's one thing he really wanted to do, was, was make people think, whether it was uh, politically or musically or whatever, that was a, Joe was a real bright guy, we all know that. I'll leave it up. I miss him. <laughs> yeah. Gonna leave this broke down palace on my hands and my knees. I will roll, roll, roll. Make myself a bed beside the water. Lovers come and go the river. For me, there's several. Um, one of them is his kindness. That, that's a big one for me. And his sweetness. And how smart he was. Those are the three that really stick out for me. He was a good person all around. I can't tell you how sweet and kind he was. He was just the best person. One that he wrote for a friend of ours, Ron, uh, who passed away from cancer several years ago and uh, just before he died he started writing a song for him and he finished it right after he died and it's called Grasping at Straws and every time I hear it I cry but I love that song it's a beautiful song he did it really well and he captured exactly how he was feeling about John or sorry about Ron passing mm -hmm. um, anyhow <laughs> now for doing this for him I wish I could write him a song and I can't make sure you, the people that you 
care about know that you care about them. Those would be things. Mm -hmm. That's what I think he would say. Mm -hmm. And go to a Grateful Dead concert, concert if you could. Others <laughs> come and go The river roll, roll, roll Going home, going home By the waterside I will rest my bones Listen to the river sing sweet songs To rock my soul Listen to 